I love hardtails, and while we normally focus on the more affordable side of mountain biking on this channel, I decided recently I'm going to splurge and buy myself my dream hardtail. I wanted my dream hardtail to be steel, not be stupidly aggressive with the geometry, have quality components, and not cost as much as an e-bike or a gently used Chrysler Crossfire. I bought a Chrysler Crossfire, and after months of research, I found my perfect hardtail. And here it is, the Noli Tayaten. When you hear the term dream hardtail, you probably think I spent $9,000 on this thing, but I'm still cheap, and in the world of boutique steel hardtails, this thing's kind of a bargain at $3,000. Even more so right now because at time of filming today, March 18th, 2023, this bike is currently on sale for $2,100. That's an insane deal. This is a fantastic bike, and at that price, you should go buy one immediately after watching this video. Make sure it's the bike for you. One important thing to note about Noli is you can buy either the frame only or a complete build, but the complete builds are sent to you unassembled. I imagine this business model helps keep pricing down, which, hey, I'm all for. I am a decent mechanic, but I don't have every tool available to me to build up an entire bike, so unfortunately, I had to travel to Missouri to get this thing built. Any bike that forces me to go to Missouri is gonna get knocked down a couple points. Fun fact, I was actually born in Missouri, so I can make that joke and not feel terrible about it. Jokes aside, Jared from Cure Cycling lives just over the border in Missouri, and he does have all the necessary tools to put a bike together, so I went up to his house and he helped me put this thing together, so thank you, Jared, I appreciate it. Missouri's a delightful place. The biking components were packaged very nicely, Everything was in the boxes that we needed to build this bike. Uh, the only thing I'm missing is the dropper post cable port. I know it exists. I've seen it in pictures. I don't know if it just wasn't included, but it's more likely that it was stuck under a flap or in some bag that we accidentally tossed aside and threw away. Not a big deal. Otherwise, this is a very complete bike. Diving into the frame, it's air hardened steel with an anti-corrosion coating on all the tubes to help prevent against rust, and aesthetically, it's just a stunning looking bike. I love how clean the cable routing is on this bike and it just flows so nicely along the frame. It is externally routed except for the dropper post, of course, but they've done a really good job with it. The Tayaten is specced with a 150 millimeter travel fork. The intended use of this frame as quoted by Noli is between 140 to 160 millimeters, but it can run a fork anywhere from 130 millimeters up to 180 millimeters. Really nice that they provide that information on their website, which should keep the forums very quiet on this question. Can I run an 800 millimeter fork on my XC bike? Other frame details do include ISCG 05 tabs so you can run a bash guard, a threaded bottom bracket which is nice to see, and super boost 157mm spacing for the rear hub. Noli calls this feature 157 trail which does allow up to a 2.6 inch tire in the rear. Can I tell a difference on the trail with that extra 9mm? No, but if the much smarter people who designed this bike tell me it's better, I'm inclined to believe them. The welds on this frame look spectacular, and from far away you probably couldn't even see them. They even have the frame specs added on the inside of the chainstay, um, so if your friends ever question you on the trail, tell me about your bike and you forget, you can just look at your inner chainstay and it will tell you everything you need to know about this bike. A couple criticisms I do have of this bike is I would like to see more water bottle bosses. There's only one set, and there is so much space inside this frame, you could probably fit two or three water bottles. This bike also didn't come with any chainstay protection, which at this price I thought was kind of weird. Not even like a clear stick on one. I did add mastic tape just to kind of quiet down that area, and I wish it was something that Noli would spec on this bike. All in all, I think this frame is a beautiful design. It's, it's really well done. Good job, Noli. I love this thing. 
Um, I think red is the correct color to get. They also make a green one. Not my personal preference. I would go with the red one. Looking at the geometry, this bike has a 64.5 degree head tube angle with a 75 degree seat tube angle. Reach on this size large frame is 495 millimeters, which is a bit longer than I'm used to, but I'm actually getting along with it okay. Wheelbase is 1,250 millimeters with pretty short chain stays at 427 millimeters. I am six foot tall. I have a 32 inch inseam. This is a size large. On paper, I think Noli nailed the geometry of this bike, and it also translates very well on the trail. Onto my specific bike, this is the NX build on the Noli website, and while yes, it normally comes with Marzocchi Bomber Z1, they didn't have any at the time when I bought it, so they offered me a RockShox Lyric Ultimate. Ah, shucks. The Bomber Z1 is a great fork, I had it on the Marin Elroy, really enjoyed it, but the Lyric Ultimate is a nice upgrade, and one of my favorite forks that I've ever used. As the name suggests, this bike comes with a SRAM NX Eagle drivetrain paired to SRAM Guide RE brakes. All right, here we go. I'm gonna complain about organic brake pads coming on bikes, but wait, this bike came with metal brake pads. All my prayers have been answered. I don't ask for much out of life. Thank you, Noli. Thank you. I did swap out the SDG TELUS 170 millimeter dropper post for a 240 millimeter travel one-up components dropper post, and it looks awesome. There's no post sticking out of this bike. Another pet peeve of mine, but it's been corrected with my wallet. It uses spank wheels and hubs, which sound eerily similar to Industry 9 hubs and also have a pretty high engagement. On the rims themselves, it does say spank an uncomfortable amount of times, three on each side, Unfortunately, those aren't stickers, so I can't easily remove them. So um, I'm riding around on a bike that says spank 12 times. Of course, this bike came with Maxxis tires, and of course I took them off immediately and replaced them with these American classic tires off my giant Fathom. Maxxis has long been dead to me. I think they're too expensive. There's cheaper, just as good alternatives out there. I'm not gonna keep feeding that monster. If you're wondering, yes, I did sell the Giant Fathom. It was a good bike. It was just too similar to my Polygon Strata. And when I got this, I wanted to ride this bike a lot more. So there was no need to have three hardtails. So the Giant Fathom is no more. As this bike currently sits, it weighs 34.26 pounds. On the trail, this bike rides as good as you would expect your dream hardtail to ride. I love this bike. While the wheelbase is only two millimeters shorter than the Marin Elroy I tested, this bike doesn't feel as awkward or cumbersome at slow speeds or when you're climbing. For where I live and in my humble opinion, anything slacker than a 64 degree head tube angle, I don't find to be as much fun unless you're just bombing down hills 100% of the time. When climbing, this bike does require a little bit of extra planning for some tight switchbacks, but the front end doesn't wander or squirm as much as some slacker bikes tend to do, and the shorter chain stays out back really help make corner exits a breeze. It pedals well in all being a hardtail, and I find it to be fairly snappy under acceleration. I guess that extra nine millimeters does help with swift acceleration and helps keep things stiff back here. With a relatively modest geometry compared to some other hardcore hardtails, this thing's actually pretty enjoyable to pedal around on some flat XC trails or just on your way up to the next downhill. Sure, it's a long bike, but it doesn't punish you for wanting to have a chill day and just put some miles in. For more downhill focused riding, at least here in Bentonville, this bike absolutely rips. When standing up and descending on this bike, I've grown to appreciate the longer reach because it does force me to be more upright and and more aggressive in the, in the proper position to help keep that front wheel planted. You know, elbows out, elbows out. I haven't descended down anything like super steep or super loose since having this bike. Uh, so unfortunately, I, I can't really comment on its performance there. I, I think it would do just fine. For riding around here in the town of Bentonville, this bike feels so incredibly capable. I often forget it's a hardtail. I have a pretty sensitive back, which begs the question, why do I even ride a hardtail? Fair point. Well, I'm stubborn and I honestly do think hardtails are more fun to ride. There, I said it. 
Luckily, this bike doesn't make my back hurt, so I'm grateful for that. Bentonville trails are fairly smooth, so take my assessment with a grain of salt, but I have taken it down a few rougher trails, and I've never regretted those decisions. There will, of course, be trails that I don't want to ride because this is a hardtail, but I haven't had to make that excuse as much on this bike. When it comes to jumping, I typically prefer shorter wheelbase bikes, but I've had a good time getting this thing off the ground. There aren't many hardtails that I want to take off big drops, but in a bucket list moment, something I've always wanted to do, I took this bike off, dropped the hammer. Pretty exciting moment as a rider, but uh, about 10 minutes after that clip, I knocked myself out and gave myself a pretty nasty concussion. High highs and low lows. Long story short, this bike is awesome and it's my favorite hardtail I've ridden to date. In a world full of very capable full suspension bikes, it might seem odd to a lot of people to buy a hardtail that's often heavier and just as expensive as a full suspension bike, but I would strongly suggest owning a hardtail. These are fun, simple machines that will make you a better rider. Your line choices are far more critical. I know I've said that plenty of times in plenty of videos, but full suspension sometimes just kind of mask your mistakes. This bike's also been great for the winter. It's, it's wet, it snows. So this bike is usually just covered in filth and all I have to do is spray it with the hose and go ride. Winter be damned. If given the choice between a $2,500 full suspension with low end parts or a hardtail with mid grade parts, I'm probably gonna go with the hardtail. And I'm not just saying that, since I bought this bike, I've ridden my full suspension maybe once in the last six months. No, this hasn't stopped me from buying a new full suspension bike. Uh, I just got it last week, so you'll hear about that soon. But yeah, this thing's awesome. I'm, I'm not gonna stop riding this because I have a new full suspension. On the Cobra score, the Noli gets a 54, which makes it the highest ranking hardtail to date. I loved the Marin Elroy, but it is more downhill focused, whereas this bike is a bit more well-rounded, which warrants it a slightly higher score. So there you have it. This is my dream hardtail that I can actually afford. Remember, it pays off to have really small dreams. This is a really excellent do-it-all hardtail and a perfect match for the rider that is willing to sacrifice some downhill performance in exchange for a more well-rounded bike. This could be your only bike for many scenarios, but maybe just rent a downhill bike if you're planning on tackling those double blacks at Whistler anytime soon. And if you like the shirt I'm wearing, be sure to check out Line Choice NWA. Uh, his name is Ryan. I recently met him. We suffered through the whole loop of tunnel vision together. He gave me this shirt. I really appreciate it. So I figured I'd wear it and make mention of it. Five or six people are coming your way, Ryan. You're welcome. I apologize for the hiatus. It is nice to be back. Uh, thank you for your patience and sticking with me. Um, if you want to hear the full story of what happened, I did a live stream recently. I'll, I'll link that down below if you want to check it out. But that's all I got for today. Thank you so much for watching. And until the next time, stay rowdy within reason.